Hey everybody, this is Nick Mayhew, three-time gold medalist and three-time world record holder, and you're listening to Power 98.5. We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Representing Extreme Couture and flying out of the way of Honolulu, Hawaii, Ty Quarter. <laughs> Representing flying out of Price, Utah, Ty Jones. Here we go. We've got. Ty Gwerder in the red and black trunks, blue tape. Mike Jones in the black trunks, red tape. Ty Gwerder, good head movement. Get out of the way of that first shot. Nasty body kick from Gwerder. No secret, Werner said he was going to keep it standing and knock him out. Flying knee just misses, and now Jones counters with a few shots. High five each other. Porter is just a happy guy. He was he was just extremely excited to be here and on the TV car. Yeah, both these guys love fighting. The thrill of it. Boom! Right on the liver. Oh, buddy! Oh, man, take to the head. You leave that liver exposed, and you are going down. And somewhere in California, Boss Rutten is smiling. A man who loves the liver kick. Yep, and when he landed, he'd say, that's the one. That's the one. I told you. Back out. Ty Quarter. Quarter keeps his spotless record. You heard it here first. Ty Gwerder, professional middleweight MMA. I'm going to call him a champion. He's a champion, especially for myself as a Las Vegas, Nevada resident. Uh, I'm proud of this young man. He's doing like things in a business that are very, very different. If you were able to see that clip, watch that t- uh, clip, Google Ty Gwerder. G-W-E-R-D-E-R. There's a lot of stuff to watch about this guy. He hails from Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, you're, you're in Las Vegas right now, right, Ty? Yes, sir. Yeah, lo- hailing f- all the way from my city, Las Vegas, Nevada. You're Listen, you're liver kicking, knee dropping, doing every major thing that you can think of in this business, but you're taking it seriously because anybody who knows when it comes to MMA – how you go in the ring isn't always guaranteed of how you're going to come out. Right yeah, or, I mean, yeah, right or wrong. <laughs> yeah, correct. I mean, I, I I try to do what I do best, you know. To everyone that's like listening, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from here and all around the world. You're listening to live on air with Stephen Cuoco on Power ninety eight point five. We have middleweight Bellator MMA professional Ty Gwerder here. How long have you been in the business? Uh, professionally, I've been I've been in for about three years now. Uh, I've been training for a little over 10 years altogether. And what's it been like? What, what's the most impactful thing you, you've learned as a professional MMA fighter? You know, it's crazy. Like, this sport really shows you 
the roller coaster ride of life. You know, it's it's never really ever in the middle. It's always the high of highs and the low of lows. You know, like when you're you're winning and constantly doing good things in there, you know, you feel like you're unstoppable and not even the road can stop you. And when you're at the lows, it's it's definitely one of those things where you, you start to contemplate life a little bit. <laughs> I mean, well, maybe not that drastic, but you know, it gets pretty close to it. It's it's a really it's a really tough sport and I've learned a lot about myself and who I am as a person and what I'm capable of doing uh mentally and physically. And that's definitely the one big takeaway I get from fighting. It was uh, written a while back ago. It says, while Bellator middleweight Ty Gwerter never backed down from a fight, growing up surrounded by the ever-present fight culture of his native Hawaii, he self-admittedly was the last of his family and friends group to start seriously training. What's, yeah. it, what's it been like since that news report? Uh, you know, it's it's been fairly good. I mean... I've been the last one to come on, come on to the scene as a fighter out of, you know, my friends, like a bunch of my friends and my family members that did train and fight. Um, you know, like I think me started myself starting, I was the youngest. So starting where I was, I was able to take more away from the sport than they did when they were my age or at my level and learning from those guys with all that, their experience has has made a very big impact on where I am in this sport. You know, I'm realistically, like, if you look at it on paper, I'm very new to this sport. And to be where I'm at now, it doesn't, the way I, like, the way I fight, the way, the way I look in there and my comfortability level of, I mean, just in general of how, where I'm at in the sport, it's, it almost doesn't make any sense. Like my coach, Eric Nixick said, you know the level the level of my gym my gym experience is equivalent to someone who's been in a game for you know half like 10 years you know like i my experience outbeats is going to always beat the guys that i'm put in front of it was written uh also by my mma news fighting found me bellator middleweight ty gorder what does that mean fighting found me um you know, like coming from coming from Hawaii and, you know, raised by Filipino family, like, uh, you know, typical Filipino family, they want you to be a nurse, a doctor, something, something more practical, you know, it just doesn't, you don't see a lot of athletes come from a Filipino family. And um, football was always my passion. I, I did very well in football uh, growing up. I was always one of the star players. I, I did really well. I and, you know, I was one of those guys that also was plagued by injuries. So that else also held me back. But um, I did I did fighting in the off season to keep me busy. And, you know, just to keep my mind on the big goal that, you know, I was meant to be more than just a nine to five back behind the behind the desk kind of guy. I have nothing against it, but that I just feel like growing up, I was always meant for more than that. And um you know going growing up it's and becoming a fighter and training has really has really like opened my eyes to what i'm capable of doing and fighting just kind of was one of those things that's like uh maybe i'll do it and it ended up being something i was really good at and i stuck with it a lot of people had belief in me that I could do something with it. And, you know, I was like, all right, I'll run with it. And <laughs> here I am. And your family is truly supportive of all of this, correct? Because you took yeah. a different direction. Yeah. They, they, my family has always been very supportive. It was a little harder for my mom. You know, she, she also wasn't very like keen of me being a football player just because she's seen me injured so many times, you know? And she was always like, just go to school and, you know, go go be a cop and go try to get into FBI or something. That was something I always wanted to do as a kid as well. But I I know with my athletic ability and how good I was at doing well anything in sport related, there was no way I was meant to just do that. You know, I, I believe 
my mom was like, oh, you're, like, you're really good at this, but you should probably go to school and just just go and do that instead. But she's always supported me. It's just been it's just a little harder when she's got to watch her baby boy get punched in the face. You know? Mm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, it's got to be really hard. I mean, especially when it when we consider the Filipino culture, it's very your culture is very different from you know, other cultures, especially when we look at family and, uh, uh, you know, following tradition, it's, it's, uh, taken a lot more seriously than say American tradition. Would you say? Yes. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Very different. So when you have children, Ty, would you, do you think that you would have balance of holding tradition more to Philip, uh, you being Filipino, or do you believe that you would incorporate some American traditions as well, or is it that strong of a connection to where you just don't deviate if you don't have to? Um, uh, I, I won't. I probably won't deviate if I don't have to. Like, you know, the one thing about I love about Filipino culture is like we very we pride ourselves very much on being family people. You know, like family is everything. Even like Hawaiian that Hawaiian culture. Um, ra- being raised in Hawaii, family, family and loyalty is everything, and I think that that's the bottom line. You know, I, I was raised purely on that. I wasn't even. It's not like my parents raised me a certain way. It was just certain beliefs were different. Like, like obviously, go and do a regular job. But you know, if my kids, my kids want to go and do something out of the ordinary, by all means, you know, I, I'm the very last person to say say otherwise. Mm. We're going to take a, a quick uh, listen to this clip by Media Day Interview, and this was just a couple months ago. would like to get your reaction or your thoughts uh, from where we are at now because things are ever so changing and growing, especially in your industry to sports of what COVID's done to it. Uh, let's take a quick listen. Ty, just to start, this is your third fight uh, under the pandemic. How does it feel to finally be fighting in front of fans and um – Getting back into that? Um, I'm actually pretty excited. Uh, it's going to be a fun fight for sure. So people are going to expect to see some fireworks. So it's nice to hear a little bit of a rumble from the crowd. And um, But either way, I'm, I'm happy if there's no crowd. And if there is a crowd, I just want to be being there fighting. If someone likes to press the action like you are, um, your last fight was a decision. Um, what, where are you, how are you training for this fight? Are you coming out hot? Are you going to be looking for a decision, looking for a finish? Um, always going for a finish. I'm going to keep that 100% finish rate all the way through my career if I can. Um, also, don't want to leave it in the hands of the judges. Nothing against them, just don't want to. Um, I want to be an entertainer and keep pushing forward, put, put people on their heels and just make it exciting. And last one before we open to the media, what's your message to the Hawaiian fans? Uh, all right, Hawaiians, I'm back. You know, I'm ready to keep this uh, island train rolling. You've got a really great spirit to you, Ty, and the authenticity and transparency that you hold within yourself and your own truth. You don't put on air for anyone, just like with this uh, this quick clip that we uh, played here by Media Day interview. Just, you know, within your body language, your eye contact, your movement, you're very self-aware. Have you... N- always known how truthful and real you are within yourself and with other people? Uh, I try to be, I've actually, I mean, some people will bring it to my attention and I don't really realize it. Like realize that I am honest. I'm very truthful. I try to be as pure as possible, you know? Uh, and I, I strongly believe that's just the best way to carry myself. It, it's not stressful you know like i can be my way be who i am without worrying about how someone else feels about who i am like either you like me or you don't and it's that's just the best way to put it and it seems it seems that everyone really likes that about me and it i i appreciate that a lot because it shows that i'm doing something right you know as a person i'm not i'm not a terrible human being you know i that's the last thing i'd want to be like if i'm if I'm there for you, I'm there for you. And if I'm not, I'm not. And people enjoy me for who I am. And that's just the best part. When you were growing up, were you the one that always initiated, uh, suggested 
you know, anytime if you were to see injustice, you know, you would call for inclusion, you would ask questions, you would encourage unity. Is that who you are? I mean, has it always been who you are? Because that's how I perceive you. Oh, yeah, for sure. I like, you know, when situations would arise, I would be like, let's be realistic here, realistic here, guys. Like, you know, growing up in Hawaii, it was always, I mean, it's crazy. People don't realize it. Like people talk with their fists before they talk it out, you know? And, um, you know, I was always trying to be that person. I was like, all right, guys, like, I don't care if you guys throw hands or you guys want to fight, whatever, like fight it out. But like, be reasonable here. You don't, it doesn't always have to be violence or whatever it is. You know, I just, I try to be, I try to go through the best route possible and that's just who I am. So why MMA? Um, like I said, it's found me, you know, I, I, the adrenaline that MMA gives, gives me, it's, it's almost, um, addicting. Uh, I love the feeling of being in there, not even to be in front of the crowd. It's just, I love the feeling of testing myself against someone else. And, you know, like I said, MMA teach taught me so much about myself that if I could do this sport forever and just continue to learn about myself, I would love to, I would love to, you know, if I could do this till I couldn't walk anymore, I would do it, you know? And, um, MMA is just, it's just a different, it's just a different sport compared to everything else. I played a lot of sports, basketball, track, football. I played soccer, you know, like there's something about MMA that just makes, makes people different. And I think a lot of who I am is because of MMA. I will tell you, you sport the blonde look, the blonde hair very well. I really <laughs> did that. Yeah. That's actually the first time I've done it since since I was a freshman in high school. So I was actually surprised it came out as well as it did. <laughs> it looks really good. So yeah, thank you. Are you going to keep it for a while or do you have your brown hair back? My brown hair is back right is now. It? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it grew up pretty quick. So I'll probably, I'll probably do it again for the next fight. I'm actually, I'm trying to go this whole Mark Hunt style pretty, for the next fight and get it all done nice and white so that maybe I'll have a bloody fight in the next fight. And well, hopefully not my blood, Ooh. but paint, paint it red for the fight. You know what? Do it. Yeah. Do it. I'm, that'd be something cool. For media purposes, you would stand out and it would make for a great talking point. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. I, I actually would love to do it. You know, it's different. I'm trying to do different things now and just have more fun with it rather than just being, plane and sometimes i feel like i can get boring so i want to i want to spice it up a little bit have you ever been told you look a little bit like dwayne johnson i have not i've i've been told i look more like jason Momoa than anything else oh really okay <laughs> yeah i, I can, don't know how <laughs> <laughs> i can see that do, do you ever plan on establishing a signature look or do you believe that you already have one um i think i do got the uh a signature look already i everyone's tied me to that kind of mullet that polynesian mullet looking hair hairstyle tattoos you know um i guess that's pretty much what it is actually when i think about it okay. I, it works it really works i'm surprised i'm not bullshitting you but it does work so we're gonna play a little game it's called what would you do you ready all right. I don't even have the questions planned. I just, I, I <laughs> this is going to be my third time doing it. And I just figured let's just have some fun. So. All right. I'm nervous. <laughs> all right. Just take a breath. <laughs> take a breath. Keep in mind. I'm the one that's got to bring, think of these questions. <laughs> all right. <laughs> but I'm going to be kind. All right. If I were to enter in the ring with you knowing I have no MMA experience, I've never trained or anything else. If I were to walk in a ring and say, you know what, I'm going to kick your ass, would and and would you shake my hand and say, listen, dude, you know what, I appreciate your spunk, you know what, uh, you know, we can give it a try, but I definitely want you to get some more experience and training behind your, you know, you for the next year or two, put in whatever amount of time you need to, or or would you be like, you know what? 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to liver kick this motherfucker. What would you do? Uh, I'll probably, I'll probably liver kick you. <laughs> would you? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I, I mean, if, if, if it came down to the point where it was like, Hey, I'm getting paid for this. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's oh, my shit. food or your food. I, I'm trying to eat. Oh, get out. Really? That was an unexpected answer. I thought you would save my life. <laughs> no, but I appreciate the honesty. Listen, no, n no bad answers here. All right. So what would you do? Um, if you were at a barbecue, would you be the bartender? Would you be at the grill or would you be sitting back, relaxing and having conversation and waiting for your food and drinks to be brought to you? What would you do? Oh, I'm the grill guy. I'm always on the grill. Even if it's not my barbecue, I'm on the grill. Oh, are you? Okay. Yeah. But, but you're, and if someone, all right, so, all right, this just came to my mind. All right. So let's say you're on a grill. What would you do? Question number three. Someone didn't like what you made and they came over, a guy came over and said, Ty, this is raw. If you don't know how to fucking cook, you shouldn't be cooking at all. Go get your dad or someone else to cook. Would you stand there? What would you do? Would you stand there and give a smile and then say, you know what? I'm very sorry about that. Let me put a new one on for you. Or would you kick them in a the lever? I'll probably kick them in a lever. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I love it. I love it. Well, uh, at least they know not to come back for seconds. Uh, I'll kick him in the liver and tell him to cook the damn steak himself next uh, there time. There you go. I love it. <laughs> All right. Question number four. What would you do if you could be any flavor ice cream? What would you be and why? Oh, that's a good question. I don't really eat ice cream, but I'd say probably maybe like salted caramel mm. because... You know, it's like, it's like sweet. I can be very sweet, but if you push me the wrong way, I can be real salty, so. I like the balance. Like just, yeah, just a little bit of both, sweet and salty. Okay. Here's one that I asked um, on my last interview. What would you do? Last question. If you had your choice to live with anything or anybody, would it be a girlfriend? Would it be a dog? Or would it be a lizard? Matt, if my girlfriend hears this, she's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, probably a dog. Really? Okay. <laughs> All right. I mean, you know, dogs Dogs are easy to easy to handle. They're, they don't fight back. They just whine. They just whine when you don't feed them and give them a little extra attention. Well, I guess you could say a girlfriend does that, but dog would be a lot easier to handle. And a food bill would be cheaper and you know that if you needed to go away for a while, you can get a sitter. You know, they, if you have a doggy door, they can go outside, they can do whatever. They're more self-sufficient. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty okay. much. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love my girlfriend. She's awesome, but dogs are pretty easy to handle. I'm really liking these answers. They are all unexpected. <laughs> all unexpected and keep in mind it just went through my head what is it about this signature liver kick that you do tell us more about that well i mean i'm a southpaw so for most people that don't know what a southpaw is i'm a lefty so my power side is my left side and um most people that are in front of me are are righties so being that they're righties the open side is that body kick for me like my power my power from my left will contact you know their right side of their um the liver so it's like okay it's just an open stance and it just plays more to my advantage so and i don't know i just everyone says i have good kicks um uh, and i guess it's shown a lot over my career that left kick is dangerous that's my sharpest sword it, what i'm surprised by is that is still obviously it is a legal um a legal thing you can do in mma yeah yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, here's the thing. Once someone gets kicked like that, are they automatically down and out? What is the recovery like as well? Um, I don't know what the recovery is like for that. If you actually get kicked pretty hard there and it does actual internal damage, I don't know. But um, I do recall that guy in the, that I fought with that. He, 
he had messaged me and said he had like a hard time pissing for like a week. Ooh. Um, like his, his, uh, his like sternum was bruised. And, um, I think like for a little while, his body, his liver wasn't processing stuff very well for a little while. Damn. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but I don't know. That's what I, that's what he's told me. So and you, I've never felt anything that bad. So, and has anyone ever liver kicked you? I have, I have, uh, I've felt those a couple of times at practice, never in a fight, but at practice I've, I've got hit with a couple of nice ones from a couple of the guys and, uh, your body shuts down right away. Like it, it'll hit you. You mm -hmm. think you're fine. And like split second later, you're on the floor, like trying to, trying to gather yourself this is why i say your professional sport has got to be taken seriously people need to treat you more than just a commodity or a bet i mean this is some serious serious stuff that can happen you know like i said as soon as you get in the ring you may not come back out the same person as you did you know when you walked in oh for sure for sure um do do you ever <clears throat> realize when the kick would come like in this profession are there at times um certain fights certain moves become predictable or is it unpredictable it's pretty unpredictable um you know i i'm actually very good one of well one of my good thing the good things about me is i'm very good at picking up tendencies and like patterns mm -hmm. of what people do and um like, I'll notice those pretty quickly in a fight. If someone likes to throw that kick, I'll pick it up quickly. Maybe he'll land one or two, but the moment I start picking up on what he's doing, mm -hmm. I'm I'm pretty good about predicting when they'll come or seeing them, seeing them the moment they when they're trying to set it up or whatever it is. You know, I I'm pretty good about seeing them. So it's if and it comes with experience too. You know, I. Every, it, with anything else once you start picking up on something and doing it for so long you kind of get adjusted to what usually comes next or what what works this way to what's next or you know it's like a chess match you kind of start predicting things now do you ever watch let's say you're going up you know against a certain person in a fight do you do your history do you go back do you watch their former fights do you look for weaknesses do you do like what they do in other sports and just do that back history to get an idea of what the temperature could be like against the component the opponent that you're going to be fighting in that moment um yeah i do very little uh i probably w will watch like their most recent and maybe the fight before that and i'll watch it maybe maybe once or twice each but um, it's like what Floyd Mayweather said a long time ago. He's like, I don't worry about what my opponent's going to do. I just do what I do best, and that's how I keep winning. Mm -hmm. And I like to I like to keep that mentality for myself. Because if I start worrying about what they're doing, then I stop doing what I'm doing. So I, I like to keep that keep that in my head. So that way, I'm the one who's leading the dance, and it's not them. Before we close out, share with us some... Uh good news which i'm sure you have are there any projects any fights coming up either sometime before the end of the year by the end of the year or that we have to look forward to in 2022 um i actually don't really have much good news at the moment <laughs> um i'm just kind of stagnant right now i actually just got back to training from my broken hands getting cleared from my broken hands from the last fight and i actually tore my acl two weeks ago oh my god during so, training you tore it yeah my first wow. week back to training i tore my acl so and i'll be out for a little bit yeah i mean an acl recovery can take weeks if not over a month right um uh use most i mean thankfully i'm not getting surgery but those who do get surgery takes about minimum six months but um the UFC doctors at the Performance Institute said if I get some stem cells, I should be back hopefully early next year, but we'll see. You're going to recover. I'm hoping, yeah, I'm hoping I can get back to it sooner than later. I'd like to fight in February. So if that falls into place, we'll see how it goes. Well, there's no reason why you can't or shouldn't fight. Um, I know from our conversation before, 
um, or a while back before we uh, made this official to have you here live on air with Stephen Quirko. And for everyone tuning in, we've got professional MMA fighter Ty Gwerter here with us today. If you're just tuning in, if you're a huge Ty Gwerter fan, um, you love his story, you may have just found out about him um whatever it may be just go ahead and tune in tomorrow which will be thursday we are going to do a special thanksgiving uh live airing of this episode we are live today we're going to re-air this episode tomorrow at 2 p.m eastern time once again Tune in tomorrow, Thursday, on Thanksgiving Day at 2 p.m. Eastern Time to recap, catch all with and about Ty Gwerter, professional MMA fighter. Uh, where would be the best go-to place to connect with you? Is it Instagram? Is it TikTok? Where are you most uh, active? Instagram is my most active. I've been a little dark lately, just staying away, staying off social media, but I'll be right back on here soon. But uh, Instagram at Ty savage.mma that's the best way to reach me i'm pretty good about getting back to everybody i try to you especially do. when it's genuine messages so yeah and i'm gonna uh you know give confirmation on that he does really really well getting back i mean that's how this interview got set up um instagram is off the hook it looks great um you know love the photos love the inter you know the interactions that you have on here, it's very, very um, friendly, very loving. Your girlfriend is gorgeous. You two look great Thank together. You. Appreciate it. Um, you've got a lot of great things it looks like that's coming up here. I love the modeling photos with you guys of how you're including these lifestyle model type of stuff. It really is a great page. Thank you. Trying to, trying to work on it, you know trying to expand my horizons i don't want to be known as just another hawaiian fighter i want to be able to do it all and you know everyone if people hit me up to do jobs like you know just to have me on on set i'm i'm always down for it and it's just cool to experience new things and that's what i'm trying to market myself as and you are still with bellator correct i am actually a free agent now and what does that mean is there a benefit to that um yeah there is i mean we're gonna take a step back and get some experience get some more experience get some wins under my pocket and maybe we'll we'll make a strong push for the ufc uh, i can see it happening i'm putting and projecting that positive energy out there you've got everything to be a success you already are a success continue even times of where you are at now ty stay positive believe in yourself and keep what you believe about yourself in your life keep that in a you know forefront of your mind's eye you know thanks steve you're very welcome you've got this and remember the slight pause of where you're at you're healing you know you got the acl that's healing you've got your hands that are healing so really look at is this a message? Is this a sign? Is this letting you know that you've got two choices? You can either continue to believe in yourself and move forward in this career or not. We know that you're going to do it. But I'm going to tell you, I don't see limitations with you. I really believe that God, the universe, all the above is just asking you, what do you really want? What do you still believe in? Do you still believe in yourself? And do you still want to move forward with where you want to go? And like you said, you want you want to be multi-talented multi-faceted in air you know all areas no matter where they can take you so we're gonna have you back on again um anything you want to talk about in the future don't hesitate to reach out you don't need to talk about a fight if there's something personal going on if you're you're getting booked you're going on a trip if you feel like you learned something in life you feel that the listeners could use words of wisdom and some encouragement from you know maybe an experience that you had going on a yacht or going somewhere with your girlfriend or recovery or whatever it may be i know that there is uh there are stories there are messages inside of you that yet to be told whether it be here oh, or so many yeah so many just just waiting for the right time to unfold the book you know open right. it up and start telling the story is there anything else you would like to, you know, give a shout out to, to anyone, any other drops before we head on out and get ready for the holiday? Uh, just a little shout out to well, everyone, everyone that's been behind me from day one. Uh, this one goes to all of you. Just appreciate you guys and all the support and 
part of my big drive is for all of you guys to keep you all entertained and uh, may everything be great on your side. Thank you for joining us. Hold the line, Ty. You're going to close out with us and then we're going to have a little bit of chat. Ty Gwerter, professional middleweight MMA fighter. Tune in tomorrow, Thanksgiving Day, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Let all your friends know. Tune in live. Download the iOS or Android app, the Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. You can also tune in and listen on Alexa. We are also on Odyssey. We're formerly known as Radio.com, Live Radio FM, Streamitter, Streama, MyTuner, and many more and more coming your way. 200 countries. The reach is now 200 countries. And I'm very grateful for all the love and support to our listeners from here and all around the world. I'm Stephen Cuoco, and you're listening to Power 98.5. socials and let's connect.